we're going to move on and use the next shape tool. So come over to your toolbar and use the flyout menu and choose the star tool. Uh, find a blank area on your workspace and your artboard. And with a star, we're going to ultimately turn these into flowers so they're not going to completely look like stars. Um, star tool does not is not a live shape, meaning you can't go back and easily edit it. So you kind of want to get this right the first time. And when we use the star tool, we're going to use a lot of different keyboard shortcuts to modify it as we're drawing it. And because of that, I do not want you to let go of your mouse button until I tell you to, which is going to be several steps in. So we're going to modify this with the arrow key, the shift key, and the command key. The arrows are going to add or remove arms from the star as we're drawing it. The shift is going to straighten our star. And the command key is going to allow us to change the radius of the arms of the star, so make them longer or shorter. All right, here we go. Remember, do not release the mouse button until I tell you to. So with our star tool, we're going to press and drag on our mouse to start making a star. And this is what yours looks like, a real star. There we go. So press and drag to start making a star. Um, get it to a width of about one inch. Don't worry about where it is. You can see mine's off the artboard. So somewhere in there is approximately where we want. Don't let go of your mouse. We want to press the down arrow on our keyboard once. That's going to take away one of the arms and give it this funny shape. Don't release anything yet. Now we're going to pr press the command key and I want you to pull out and see how the arms get longer or go in and see how they get softer. We're going to bring it to a softer point so it looks something like this. When you're happy with that, you're going to let go of the command key, still not your mouse. And then to get it to straighten out, we're going to press press the shift key one last time. Now we have it how we want it. So now we release the mouse and then the shift key. I encourage you to do that a few times over until you get the hang of it. So as you're dragging, you're going to use the down or up arrow key to add or remove arms. You're going to use the shift key to straighten it out and you're going to use the command key to make the arms longer or shorter from the center of the star. And you don't let go of anything until you're set, then you let go of your mouse and then your other keys. So right now we have a star that's kind of a weird shape selected, but we're gonna switch to our selection tool and I'm just gonna move it onto the artboard better so I can see it. And I'm going to zoom in, so Command Plus. All right, here is our star. With it selected and our selection tool as our chosen tool, we're going to come up and we're just going to shift, hold the shift key and we're going to drag a corner to proportionately resize it to a width of approximately 0.4 inches. So shift and drag on one of these until you're at approximately 0.4 for width. And again, in real life, you know, you're going to be drawing these based on what size they need to be. You're not going to know a predestined size. But there's a width of 0.4, so I let go of my mouse, then my key. All right, we're going to um, take, with this resize, we're now going to switch back to the star tool. Come over here and grab that. And we're going to press the shift key and draw a star that's a little bit smaller than this one. So shift and we're going to draw a star a little bit smaller and then let go of the mouse and then the shift. Um, notice that this new star has the same basic settings as the first one you drew. So it's remembering how many sides and what the radius is of these arms. And it's doing something very, well, exactly the same. All right. We're going to rotate this star, so we're going to go up to our Transform panel in the Properties panel, and there is a Rotate value, and we're going to change this by typing in 45 degrees, and then hitting either Tab or Return, and that's going to spin it. And then we're going to scale this star. We're going to make sure that our Constrain Width and Height are selected. So over here we're going to actually click on this so it looks like a chain link. They're selected. Now whatever we do to one it will do to the other to keep them in proportion. 
we're going to change our height value and we're going to change this to 0 0.14 and hit tab and notice that that just bumped us to the next option but it also made our width change because they were constrained all right jump back to our selection tool that picks the whole thing we're going to take this shape and we're going to drag it into the center of this larger star. So when you get to the intersection point or the center point, we're going to just move it in here. And now we need to change the color so it's a little bit easier to see. We're going to change this one from green to yellow. So just come up to your appearance panel, choose yellow. And then we're going to click away from it to deselect it. First to get rid of your swatches, then to deselect this shape. And then we're going to click the larger shape and we're going to change the fill color of this to be white. Okay, we're going to click away. That's going to close our swatches. And then to group these two together, we're going to marquee select them and that's going to select our big white shape and our smaller yellow shape inside and we're going to come over to our panel and we're going to group them so they move together. And we can click away and it feels like it went away, but just let me show you. That's really what we have, white with yellow on top of it. All right, we can do a file, save as, and we are on page 101. Oops, postcard 101. All right. The last tool that we need to learn about is drawing lines. Um, we're going to create lines and line segments, which are open paths. They have starting points and ending points. And lines created with the line segment tool are live. And similar to live shapes, they're live lines. They have many editable attributes after they're drawn. So we're going to come over to our star tool and we're going to choose the last tool, which is the line segment tool. Um, to the right of our bowls, we're going to need to zoom out or fit our artboard in the window. Um, Command zero will do that for you. To the right of our bowl over here, we are going to press and drag up to draw a line. As we drag though, we're going to press the shift key to constrain the line to 45 degrees. Notice the length and angle will show up in the measurement label and we're going to drag until our line is around two inches in length. length. So press and drag up to draw a line and we're going to hold shift. Notice it's crooked until we hold shift and then it's constrained and we're going to make a two inch line. So when that is good, let go of your mouse and then let go of the shift. With our new line selected, <clears throat> we're going to move our pointer just off of the top end up here. When the pointer changes to our rotate arrows, like you see there, we're going to press and drag down until we see an angle of zero. This is going to make our line horizontal. So we're just going to turn it to zero. And you can probably guess there was a keyboard shortcut that we could have used also to constrain it to jumps of 45 degrees. So lines rotate around their center point by default. Um, the angle of the line can also be changed in our properties panel. We're going to take our selection tool in the toolbar and we're going to drag this line from its center point. So we're going to grab it here and we're going to bring it to just below the bowl. When it's touching the bottom of the bowl and it is aligned horizontally, we'll see that guide, we're going to release it. So we're going to take it from here, we're going to bring it down here, and we're going to get it lined up. There we go, and we're going to let go. So this line represents a table that the bowl is sitting on, so make sure that the line touches the bottom of the bowl. With this line still selected, we need to give it some attributes. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our stroke and we're going to give it a weight of two points. So you can arrow up here if you would like, or you can type in two. And then we're going to click on the stroke color box and make sure that we have our swatches option, which we do. And we're going to select a brown color that starts with 35. 60, 80, 25. So this color of brown is our table. 
Finally, to change the length of the line from the center, we're going to move the pointer over one of the ends. So we're going to come down here to one of the end points and we're going to hold down the Option key while we drag away from the center. Because we're holding Option, whatever we do to this point is going to be done equally to the opposite end. So we're going to drag with the Option key and we're going to drag until we have a, grab a hold of that, have a distance of four inches. Um, notice I am able to twist it a little bit here, so we want to keep it at the 0% so that it's completely flat, and we just want to take it out to 4 inches. Let go of your mouse, then let go of your Option key. Um, as we're dragging, we probably saw the words line extension, and that just is because our smart guides are on. And the last thing we're going to do is drag across the two rectangles, for the bowl and the line beneath, and we're going to group them together. So we're going to take our selection tool and we're going to select the two rectangles for the bowl and the line. Actually, we're going to select all three pieces, so I'm just going to come away from that. We're going to select, this is actually a rectangle, that's how it started. This was a rectangle and this is our line. So by getting a piece of them in our marquee, we select all three of them and we're going to group them together that way when we move them they all move in tandem all right deselect and we're going to move on from there